Praise God. God is good. He is with us and he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Amen. Praise God. Shall we take turn our Bibles to again to Joshua 14 continuing on the same teaching Joshua chapter 14 10 to 13 we are going to take the continuing on that same uh, teaching on being strong and becoming strong and staying strong in the Lord and in his strength as long as we live amen and for us to be strong in him as long as we live we need to be strong today and we need to be strong in our spirits amen amen joshua 14 was 10 to 14 shall we read together and now behold the lord has kept me alive as he said these 45 years so what god promised god made sure he fulfilled that though though so many that one entire generation perished in those 40 years in the wilderness god's word to caleb and joshua came to pass that after 45 years it's not that god promised and suddenly along the way they had he they they caleb or joshua had a sudden high fever and died or or uncontrollable you know some sickness the uncurable sickness and they died no all those accidents don't happen when god has planned something for you and you are wholeheartedly following him see god had a plan for the rest of israel also he wanted to take all of them into the promised land but their nature of talking against him rebelling against him and moses their nature of complaining their nature of not seeing what god had for them their nature of being disconnected from god their nature of not giving themselves to god wholly because of that heart and that nature though god had a plan for them it was not fulfilled they perished in the wilderness that's what the bible shows us so god has a about in case of in the case of Caleb and Joshua God said something and they wholeheartedly followed him they had faith they continued to worship him follow the leader God placed above them he they continued not to complain not to be anxious continue to walk by faith and they inherited what God had promised amen, amen. God will not change we may choose to change and lose what god has kept but god will not change his promise amen and so even today if god has called you for something and god has promised you something and you know you have to follow the lord but you are you are half with god and half in the world and you're trying to balance the world and god understand that never works wholeheartedly follow Jesus if you don't understand what that is pray every day even today right now bow down before God and say lord i want you to touch me i want to know you from my heart i don't want just a head knowledge of you i don't want just a head knowledge of your word i want to really love you from my heart and i really want to worship Amen. Go ahead and ask the Lord. Tell Lord, yes, I want to follow you like Caleb and Joshua wholeheartedly. Though the promise may be delayed, I want to follow you wholeheartedly. I don't want to waste my time in the world. I want to be with you, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will enable you and empower you for that. Amen. And so Caleb is saying, after these forty-five years, God has kept me alive. Amen. If we are alive today, we are alive because God has a purpose for us. Amen. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness and now here I am this day 
85 years old verse 11 as yet i am as strong this day joshua 14:11 and i can go on to the teaching without reading these scriptures but i want these scriptures and the power in that word that life and spirit and truth to be embedded to be carved upon your heart that's why i'm reading some of these scriptures again and again as caleb said as yet i am as strong this day as on the day that moses sent me he has maintained his faith his strength his commitment for 45 long years he had it before that and now for 45 years he's still the same amen praise god just as my strength was then so now is my strength for war both for going out and coming in amen lift your hand say so lord strengthen me with your strength i want your strength in my spirit amen when his strength is in you you will stay strong always and i pray that his strength and life will flow into you that his strength and life even this morning as it flows into you every disease and sickness in your body let it die in jesus name you will not die let the sickness and disease that the enemy has put upon you let that perish in jesus name amen. and may you be healed in the name of jesus amen everything that is obstructing your walk with jesus everything in your body that is stopping you from serving jesus that stops you from following him properly or serving him let those things be uprooted from your life in jesus name every demonic affliction over your mind or body or family let it be uprooted in jesus name so you can follow him and serve him wholeheartedly amen, amen. hallelujah did you say amen and receive it amen, amen. praise amen. god hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord look at caleb a man full of the spirit so strong after 45 years he is still strong this is what god wants in your life also amen praise god verse 12 now therefore give me this mountain of which the lord spoke in that day for you heard in that day how the anakim were there and that cities were great and fortified it may be that the lord will be with me and i shall be able to drive them out as the lord said and joshua blessed him and gave hebron to caleb the son of jephuna as an inheritance amen so after 45 years he is telling joshua give me this mountain now as we have been speaking the last two weeks what or how do you see yourself and i'm continuing on that we spoke on how we need to see ourselves as redeemed chosen forgiven adopted in god's family blessed saved delivered sealed by the holy spirit Amen. have you are you meditating on that are you are you meditating on those truths every day that it will become a part of your life are you are you getting into that word if not you will hear we will hear all this and we will forget it again and we come back to the same place of of you know sorrow and tribulation again but when you meditate and start seeing yourself the way god sees you and then we looked at scriptures last week and the wednesday before that last sunday and the wednesday before that some one thing 139 god has made you he has created you as his child and and you he has created you and you became his child when you received jesus so see yourself not as just someone somewhere with no no uh, connection or relationship with god but see yourself as a child of god the israelites couldn't see it all they knew is when moses said let's pray they pray when moses said let's go let's go, they went when moses said cross the red sea they crossed the red sea they just kept doing something but they didn't have 
a connection or a relationship with Jesus or with God they didn't realize who they are but you are not like that you know you are a child of God say i am a child of God amen, amen. say loudly i am a child of God amen. amen blessed be the name of the lord i am a child of God and today you're going to we are looking at another reason why Caleb was strong till then now when you compare Caleb's attitude with the Israelites attitude in numbers 13 come again to numbers 13 numbers 13 say again lord make me strong lord make me strong amen you don't want you don't want to be somebody who becomes strong in the lord only when you're 85 be strong if you're 5 years old be strong in jesus if you're 25 be strong in jesus if you're 45 be strong in jesus when you're 65 be strong in jesus when you're 85 be strong in jesus amen in numbers 13 we read that the last couple of weeks we know what they said we just read was 33 quickly numbers 13 33 There we saw the giants the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight chapter 14 chapter 14 so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept at night and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation and said to them if only we had died in the land of Egypt or if only we had died in the wilderness why has the lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should be should become victims would it not be better for us to return to egypt so they said to one another let us select a leader and return to egypt now When you look at the Israelites and Caleb what the Israelites one of the things that was really different between the Israelites and Caleb and Caleb and Joshua Caleb and Joshua could see what God said so in essence they could see the purpose for which god had brought them out of egypt and they could see the purpose towards which god was taking them the israelites not only did they not see what god had made them or what god had made them to be they just could not see anything ahead of them they could not see the purpose for which they came out of egypt That's why I said they were just people who just kept doing what Moses said. Moses said stand, they stood. Moses said sit, they sat. Sat down. Moses said walk, they walked. Moses said the sea is parted, walk, they walked. They just didn't see. And unfortunately, many Christians are that way today. We we just do things because we are told. not that you it is good to do it is good to be submissive it is good to be obedient it is good to go whenever the where, especially in the church it's good to be with the church and do whatever the church does so this doesn't mean that when the church says we have a fasting and prayer i you say you know pastor said that they all followed they just did what moses said so i don't want to be dumb like that let me think whether i should go for the fasting and prayer that's not what this means that this means you come for the fasting of prayer understanding the purpose it doesn't mean next sunday you say pastor said all that so the, i'm just going for the service because you know they are having the service let me pray and see i don't feel any that's not it you come knowing there is a purpose you come for a wednesday service knowing there is a purpose you pray every day and study your bible knowing that there is something more than just the physical activity there is a end to it and there's a purpose to it and there is a meaning to it and when you get hold of that is when uh, even after the service or after the time of prayer even your personal prayer you continue in that word and you continue in that truth can we quickly take one verse from james james chapter 1 
James chapter 1 James chapter 1 verse 21 James chapter 1 and verse 21 21 and 22 Therefore lay aside or put aside The Bible doesn't say God will make you put aside God's Holy Spirit God the Holy Spirit is in you And he prompts you, he moves you But he has not made you a robot To just do what he says You, We yield to him That's why the word in different places Tells us that we need to do something and while his grace is working with us Paul said whatever I am I am by the grace of God yet I have labored more than all of you that means grace is working but I am working with the grace amen, amen. therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word Receive with meekness the implanted or engrafted or the word that has been put into you. Receive with meekness or humility. What does it do which is able to save your souls? But be doers of the word. So the word of God comes to you. The word of God comes to you. It is dropped into your heart by the Holy Spirit. What does the word say? You need to receive that word. You need, that means the word is there, but you don't just let it be there. You receive the truth in that word. You accept the truth. You submit to that truth. I don't just say I love you Lord and then not do what he says. I receive that word that is planted in me. If the Israelites, when Moses told the Israelites, the Lord has met me and told me and he wants to deliver you out of Egypt. And this is what the Lord says. If they had received that word, see that word went to them. But if they had received the truth in that word, they would have realized they can go and conquer that land that God showed them. But for them, those were empty words. Like for many Christians, it's today. They come to church, they listen, but they are, these are just words, just words all over, just words. John 3.16, just words. Uh, uh, different scriptures, different truths. Caleb was strong, just words. You are not receiving what the secret and the power that is in that word, we are not receiving. Amen. While we are ready to receive sometimes many things from the world, we are ready to catch those things and meditate and be excited about it. But when the word of God comes, we are not receiving that implanted word. Amen. Receive that word. Then you won't be like the Israelites just, you know, following, going here, there, just because somebody is saying. Caleb and Joshua had the right attitude. They received the word. And then the word says, which is, what does that word do? That word is able to save you. Amen. That word is able to save you. But be doers of the word. You receive, that word saves you. And that word, you, be, you do that word. Amen. And so whenever you're receiving, when you're hearing these truths, what should you do? Again, you need to spend time even after the service in the evening. Through the week, take these scriptures and meditate, 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 meditate so that this word, you receive this word, this word that is implanted, you receive it and it becomes fruitful in your life. The Israelites heard all this but no effect. I pray that whatever you're hearing today will have an effect and impact on you no matter what your age. Say, lift your hand and say, Jesus, you speak to me, Lord. Lord, you touch my heart, Lord. 
you anoint me, Lord. Lord, help me to follow you, Jesus. Amen. Let this word be meaningful to you. Now, the Israelites could not see anything beyond the words that Moses spoke. They could not see the promise that God had given. They were just, you know, when everything was good, they were happy. When things went bad, they said, let's go back to Egypt. All they could see was they could only see Egypt. They could only see Egypt. They could only see their past life. But Caleb, when you see Caleb and Joshua, Caleb saw two things. Say Caleb saw two things. Two things, both of which the Israelites could not see. One, the long-term purpose of God. Basically, the purpose, but in that purpose, he saw the long-term purpose and he saw the immediate purpose. He saw two things. He was clear about these two things. That's why he was ready to wait for 45 years and then claim his promise. Amen. What did Caleb see that the Israelites did not see? Caleb saw that God had promised this land to the Israelites, the promised land, the land of Cana, the land of Israel, God had promised it. Now, when you look at that, that, that place that God promised Israel or this, these people who came out of Egypt, what does that symbolize for us? That symbolizes for us our eternal home. Amen. Are you listening? The promised land for us is heaven itself. So Caleb saw that clearly. And he was ready and he knew that God would take them into that land. If we hold on to Jesus, we know he will take us to heaven. Amen. Second, the second thing he saw, he knew once he reads there, he said, what did he say in verse, verse 3, 12 in Numbers, in Joshua 14? He said, now give me this mount. Now give me this. Now they were already in the land of Israel. And he is telling Joshua, we are here. It's fine. Now give me this mount. He's asking for his personal inheritance. While... The promised land which they got into shows the eternal inheritance. Him asking, Caleb asking for give me this mountain which God promised. That's his personal promise. So there are promises for you in this life. There are things that God wants to give you in this life. And there are things that God wants to do through your life in this life. Amen. He wants to do things. He said, give me this mountain. And he said, if God is with me, I will chase away the enemies. Amen. So God wants you to be a person who realizes or sees yourself as a person with a purpose. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a person with a purpose? Or... Do you see yourself like the Israelites? No purpose. I get up in the morning. I, 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 I brush my teeth. I just I cook food or I eat food. I just go to office or I sit at home or I just I play games. I just I just watch some television. Then I talk to some people. Then I sit again. Then I do something. Then end of the day, nothing. There is no purpose. Do you see yourself every day as a person with a destiny, with a purpose, with a, as a person who's going towards something in life. Otherwise, we'll be like the Israelites. They got up every morning. If Moses gave bread and the water came from the rock, they drank it. If there was not there, they complained. They said, we'll go back. It's such a, uh, such a bad place to be, right? So they, that's how they were. But Caleb was clear. God said, that land is mine. God will give. God said, this mountain is mine. I will take it. 
God to God has said that his eternal life is mine through Christ Jesus. I will go to heaven with Jesus. It I will live my life and I will walk wholeheartedly with Jesus because he has promised heaven. Yes, there may be difficulties, but by faith Jesus will take me. He will take me home. God has given me promises on this earth. He has promised me help so I claim that mountain. He has promised me prosperity for his glory so I will claim prosperity. He has claimed he has promised me freedom from every curse so I will say Lord give me this mountain. Give me freedom from curse. Give me freedom from sin. Give me freedom from sickness. I will claim what God has given me. Amen. And along with those promises that are very clear to see that god has a purpose in your life for you to he has a calling for you that's the purpose jo caleb saw that now look at just turn to uh, ecclesiastes ecclesiastes say i'm a person with a purpose a person with a purpose amen not just living every day and then going to die one day but a purpose a purpose for Jesus a purpose for the kingdom of god ecclesiastes 2 1 to 11 we are going to read those verses and the, may the holy spirit reveal what how what we should not be what we should not be so that we are very clear as we as, as we are speaking what we should be I said in my heart you get Ecclesiastes chapter 2 1 to 11 and this is important because the reason Caleb was strong when he was 40 and when he was 85 is because he saw in his heart and spirit what he was called for Amen If you and I if we don't see what God has called us for and the purpose it's very difficult to have strength it is very difficult to move forward amen Ecclesiastes this is a book written by David's son Solomon the king Solomon I said in my heart come now I will test you with mirth or enjoyment and fun Therefore enjoy pleasure but surely this also was vanity or another word for vanity is useless this also was useless or vanity something that passes away he said let's have enjoyment i said of laughter madness and of mirth what does it accomplish i searched in my heart how to gratify or satisfy my flesh with wine while guiding my heart with wisdom so solomon is saying see i have tested all these things i said let's have enjoyment let's be let's have fun let's be madly in fun let's enjoy life and like he said he's saying i i tried to be i tried to enjoy with wine while i guided my heart with wisdom he realized it's not possible and how to lay hold on folly till i might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives so he is starting by saying i tried enjoyment and having extreme fun for some of us the ambition for life is have fun that's the purpose we live for and and today's world everything in the world tells us only that enjoy life enjoy life we'll give you a loan of 10 lakhs go for a world trip but you don't realize that 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 10 lakhs that you go out god has a loan will make you a slave maybe for the rest of your life some of us we are not careful we just do it enjoyment is everything the world is throwing that at us for for many of us in today's culture it is our mobile phone it is playing games after games after games on the phone our life it's will we think life is all about gaming it's about playing it's about chatting it's about music it's about movies it's about it's about all this just enjoy enjoy and life is not more than nothing more than this 
or it's or god is in a compartment this and we are we are living this solomon the wisest man who ever lived he saying i tried this see david didn't try all this david only worshiped the lord he knew all that matters is god his son solomon prayed for was he had wisdom but somewhere you realize as you read his heart was still not following god because he was doing all uh, trying other things too and he's writing it he said i tried to gratify my flesh with wine while i guided my heart with wisdom means there is wisdom in the heart i know i can handle it but let me try some wine was for i made my works great so one part is enjoyment i made my works great i built myself houses and planted myself vineyards i made myself gardens and orchards orchards and i planted all kinds of fruit trees in them i made myself water pools from which to water from grow water the growing trees of the grove i i acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house yet i had great possessions of herds and flocks and all the all who were in jerusalem before me i also gathered for myself silver and gold and the special treasures of kings and of the provinces i acquired male and female singers the delights of the sons of men and musical instruments of all kinds so i became great and excelled more than all who were before me in jerusalem all my wisdom remained with me again he saying wisdom was with me but i acquired houses i acquired gardens vineyards i i made pools for to supply water i had flocks i had cattle i had lot of silver so solomon said i made great wealth i had great possessions i had houses i had in today's language i had multiple flats i had multiple cars i had multiple bikes i had multiple multiple mobile phones i had multiple plots of land i i i could go for a holiday in in the best places i could go to five star hotels i could i could do all that i could this but wisdom was with me so he is first he's talking about enjoyment second he's talking about his achievements What is he trying? He's trying to find purpose and achievement. Verse 10. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. From any pleasure, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. Verse 11. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on the labor in which I had toiled. and indeed all was vanity everything was useless yellavo vyarthavagiro karya and grasping for the wind there was no profit under the sun what a word would you underline that verse 11 the last line there was no profit under the sun solomon the wisest man who ever lived God he asked for wisdom God gave he saying i tried to find meaning in enjoyment in all these achievements in building things and acquiring slaves in pleasure i tried but he's saying in the end it profited me nothing that's why jesus said what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul now what was solomon seeing his purpose as he didn't see like david his father seeing i want psalm 27 verse for one thing i desire and this will i seek after to dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life Psalm 84 How lovely is your tabernacle O Lord of hosts Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want David did not say I tried to satisfy my flesh with wine while wisdom remained with me sounds good but David's heart was only in the Lord He found his purpose in the Lord Amen Solomon is trying different things to just satisfy himself he knows what the Lord is saying but he's trying to enjoy this What kind of a person are you or are we today are we trying to find our answer 
in achievements in enjoyment yes we want the lord but our, we don't see our purpose we are still going after these things how much are you willing to give up or sacrifice for jesus how much are you really willing to see that all the things that you if you set your heart on this this is vanity this is useless but the lord is the one who matters what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world now some of us will say no i don't want the whole world i just want some peace and quiet i just want to be happy i just want to be simple what does it profit you if you're peaceful and simple and happy but you soul lose your soul in the end the question still is the same have you received jesus have you given yourself whole heartedly to him have you seen your purpose are you living for a purpose may the holy spirit today touch you and show you that like caleb you need to see the promised land you need to see yourself not just as one just lost individual or one just individual there but see yourself with a purpose as a person with a purpose in christ jesus Amen. This, this. So, you, you, you cannot be like Solomon where you're just trying to. You're wasting your life in vanity. You want to be like David. Amen. Say hallelujah. You cannot be someone who just loses yourself in work day after day, work, 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 but no heart for God. You have a purpose. But you may say, Lord, oh, but I have so many troubles, Pastor. So many difficulties. So many things are wrong. through all that see the purpose yes israel is in a bad time they are in the wilderness and they have a great battle to fight that's why that i said a few weeks back the israelites in a way were justified they were right in saying it's difficult but all they could see is the safety of their families oh our wives and children will die we will die let's go back to they could not see that god had given them a purpose and that purpose was to conquer that land god has a purpose for you and he has a purpose for you to serve him in the kingdom of god another way to put it one way i put it is eternal life the promise that god has given us the life for the uh, uh, the promise of eternal life and the promises have we have in this bible for this life long term and short term or this life and after another way to see it, god has a purpose for you on this earth in the kingdom of god and he has a individual purpose for you to serve him when you look at caleb see how beautifully he did it He just continued with Israel for 45 years till they entered the promised land and till they had conquered the land he just continued with Israel when things had settled for Israel then when it was after some time probably 5 years because now it's 45 years that means it's they were after God told them they will wander for 40 years they had already done it for 2 years another 38 years so total 40 years and now he is 45 years that means after they entered the promised land probably 7 years later when things had settled for the rest of israel that's when caleb says now give me this mount are you listening that means he was with israel fulfilling the purpose that god had given them and finishing that task he didn't say i don't know about you god said that mount and i'm going and taking that mount Now some of us are like that today we are only bothered what is my ministry what is my ministry what is my ministry you don't care for the church you don't care for the kingdom of god you don't care for anything around only what is my ministry what is my ministry i want my ministry and if you have the gift of singing or something like that you are in this church and you are leading worship and then the closest church or or some church says you come we will uh, you come and lead worship for us since you got a chance you'll say now that is my ministry is to lead worship so i am going you don't see that's not how we function you function in the kingdom of god for the kingdom of god and in that over time god releases your ministry and your gifts and your calling 
Today we all have become selfish. My ministry, my what is that? My ministry first, the kingdom of God. Say kingdom of God. Kingdom Say God. loudly, kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Caleb saw that first Israel, then me. First kingdom of God, then you, and then me. First the church. As you function in your purpose with the church, what's your purpose? Keep working with the church. Keep working in the kingdom of God. Keep serving God in whatever God has given you. Keep doing the things of God. And as you do that, your promises and your, your calling, your ministry will burst forth because you are not after yourself, but you are seeing God's kingdom first. What did, so in essence, what did Caleb do? He was seeking the kingdom of God first and all other things as the mountain that God had promised got added to him. Amen. Are you listening? He, he, he was fulfilling that scripture. He sought first the kingdom of God. What God promised Israel, he made sure that happened first. Then he waited for about seven years till he asked for what belonged to him. Amen. Amen. Today in churches, we find people, as soon as they born again, they have uh, a gift of, if they think, or, or whether indeed or not, they have, if they think they have a gift of preaching or music or, or, or certain gifts, the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit manifesting, immediately people want to be in front, want, want people, to, others to follow them, they want ministry, they want a name, and it's all covered with the thing that I want to do it for the glory of God. But it doesn't work like that. First learn to serve. First learn to submit. First learn to be with the church. First learn to be along with others who have gone ahead of you. And be, be faithful and have a servant heart. And then as you continue for years. I really, I really mean years. Because it's not just about serving God. It's about developing our maturity in the word of God first. So that we will last a long time. Amen. We have to last a long time. Solomon was great, but he ruined everything. He had the gift of wisdom, great wisdom, but he didn't know how to follow God with his heart. And so you seek the kingdom of God first and God will burst forth the purpose that is there for you. That will burst forth. Amen. Are you listening? Are you listening? I'm putting it in two ways. One, spiritual, that is the eternal home heaven is your purpose keep your eyes on that on the earth you have promises from god spiritual promises health prosperity the salvation deliverance the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit all these promises hold on to along with that the purpose that you are a part of the kingdom of god say i'm a part of the kingdom of god that's your identity do you see yourself as a part of the kingdom of God I see so many people so many Christians I've seen it in our church I've seen it in so many other churches people go to churches to get deliverance pastor pray I want freedom I want restoration I want healing Lord do it pray pastor pray yes and pa and I pray or whoever I mean it's it's common so it's not just to, uh, limited to our church and they get deliverance they get healing and then they don't care for the church anymore you're not bothered even if they are if you don't leave the church still while you're in the church if you're free you're happy but if you're not free you ask for prayer if you if you have difficulty you ask for prayer but more than that, do you see yourself as a part of the church, whether in problem or out of problem? Do you see yourself that you're part of the kingdom? You have to be part of serving God. Yes, you will have trouble. You can ask for prayer and we can all pray and you can be free. But that's a part of it. But beyond that, do you see yourself that you're a part of this church? You're a part of the kingdom of God. You're not just there to pray and ask for freedom whenever you want, but you are there to contribute. Are you listening? Caleb was in the army of Israel to contribute. Are you listening? How many of you are listening? Purpose. Do you, do you see yourself as a person with purpose in this church, in the kingdom of God? What is your contribution? How often do you think, Lord, how can I be of service in your kingdom? Amen. 
how do i become how do i serve god in this church amen see yourself as a part of the church as a part of the kingdom as a part of the whole as a part of the body of christ if you don't see that purpose after some time you'll say i love the lord i'll just pray at home there is no christianity at home christianity is in the church amen are you listening amen. that means you cannot just sit at home and say i follow jesus like this that's not in the bible you follow jesus as the bible says with the church yes there are challenges in the church yes there are people who will hurt you but that's the challenge that's what purifies you when a brother in christ hurts you you need to forgive that is sometimes more difficult than forgiving somebody who is an unbeliever but that's the challenge god is purifying you Amen. take it up and go through that somebody hurts you yes praise god forgive and go on and god is building your character amen say hallelujah hallelujah but through all that you see i am a person with a purpose i am a person with a destiny with a calling of god amen caleb saw what the rest of the israelites didn't see for them it was just today is there food today is there bread today is there music ministry is there is there bible study they all they saw as today now now they couldn't see long term caleb was ready to wait for 40 years to see the promise fulfilled amen say hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord hallelujah say god has a purpose amen let's look at a few verses in the new testament quickly praise god hallelujah philippians <coughs> chapter 3 philippians 3 God has a calling for you in the kingdom that is along with the kingdom and along with the church and also individually. It's never about me. It's about working together and being in a place and planted and flourishing and growing from there. Amen. Some of us are not even 40 and before that we want worldwide ministry. God has blessed great, but first learn we need to be learn to be planted in a church we know we need to be we need to learn to be slow to allow god to fulfill his purpose in us and through us amen, amen. we some of us are not even 40 and we are worried i've not achieved anything in life nothing i've achieved in life wait god has a purpose and a calling just faithfully pray every day stay in your prayer time stay studying the word of god and in time what god has called you to that you will achieve amen don't lose heart don't lose hope don't give up don't say i want to go back to egypt that was better see yourself as a person with a purpose and that purpose may take time but god will fulfill it because he is faithful amen say hallelujah Philippians 3 was 12 not that i have already attained or am already perfected but i press on for what that i may lay hold of that for which christ has also laid hold of me amen paul is saying i'm not per- i'm not perfect but i'm pressing forward i'm pushing forward i'm moving forward so that i can take hold of what take hold of that for which jesus took hold of me what did jesus take hold of you for is it only to give you health and wealth and prosperity and blessing and and deliverance he will give that that's the fringe benefits those are the small benefits that you get He took hold of you for eternal life. Amen. He took hold of you to make you a vessel of honor in his kingdom. Are you listening? Amen. Hallelujah. And so you press on to take hold of that. Don't allow the noise and the enjoyment and the pleasures of this world to make that obscure and make you turn away from that thing for which Jesus took hold of you how did he take hold of you 
he took hold of you by dying for you on the cross shedding his blood rising again going to heaven seated at the right hand of the father interceding for you he's taken hold of you for a purpose Amen. and you want to just waste your life in enjoyment and building and buying and selling hallelujah what's your purpose take hold paul said i'm pressing on to take hold of that for which jesus took hold of me he took hold of me for holiness and so i'll press on with the holy spirit to live a holy life he took took hold of me for that so i'll stay out of sin i won't be like solomon who said i tried to gratify myself with wine while i guided my heart with wisdom i don't want to say that come on hallelujah praise god i hope you don't have that much wisdom praise god say hallelujah are you listening amen he took hold of you for holiness he took hold of you to be separate from this world and to be united with him amen amen press on in prayer and the scriptures to take hold of that yes amen hallelujah don't press on to take hold of the things of the world all my friends are doing so i also will do that everybody is doing so it's all right that's pressing on to be like the world don't press on for that press on for jesus amen 1 timothy 6 are you with me still yes yes just a couple of verses before we end but take hold of this truth and when we finish receive this word that has been implanted in your heart receive it so that it will save you and be a doer of this word 1 Timothy 6 19 we'll read from verse 17 to 19 to again put it in perspective we don't follow riches or we don't go after riches or you no know, solomon thought that money is happiness having a lot of things is happiness he realized in the end everything is useless he said there is no profit in this there's just no profit in this some of us think if we have a lot of wealth that means god has blessed me god is happy with me god may be happy with you but money is not the only sign that god is happy with you that means our poor people who really love the lord love the lord and god has allowed them to be that way for now compared to us they are poor is god not happy with them not necessarily right so wealth is not i cannot say god is last year i had 1 uh, lakh this year i have 2 lakh so see god is so happy with me so we don't decide god is happy with me or not based on how much money i have or how many things i have Amen. Last year I had only one car, now I have two cars. See how happy God is with me. No, we don't. That's how the Pharisees were in the Bible times. That's why they would condemn others. Wealth is not a proof of God being happy with us. It, God is the one who blesses. Of course, if we have it, we believe and we know God is the one who blesses us. But that is not a uh, end or or. a final way of saying god is so happy with us be let's be careful about that that's just a warning for us for us verse 17 1 timothy 6 to verse 17 to 19 command those who are rich in the present to age not to be haughty or proud not to trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy so trust in the living god verse 18 let them do good that they may be rich in good works ready to give willing to share doing what verse 19 storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life what is more precious not the riches you have or the riches you don't have not the house or the lack of it yes you have to it doesn't mean we don't work you you have a family you have to take care of your family you have to work 
you have to send your children to school you have to pay their fees there are things to buy yes we have a natural life but what is where is your focus in between all that do you see yourself as a person with a purpose in the kingdom of god paul is saying don't trust in riches but store riches in heaven and lay hold of eternal life i want to ask all of you listening have you laid hold of eternal life in christ jesus amen praise god hallelujah I'll say i will lay hold of eternal life Ephesians 1 Ephesians 1 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 Just as he Ephesians 1 verse 4 just as he chose us God has chosen us like he chose the Israelites in him before the foundation of the world for what that we should be holy and without blame before him in love he has chosen us in christ to be holy and blameless through jesus he has chosen us say he has chosen me he has chosen if he has chosen you that means there is a purpose lift your hand up lift your right hand or left hand up or both your hands say If my God has chosen me, my God has chosen there, is there is a purpose. There is a promise. There is a promised land. There is a purpose. Amen. 2 Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Two Timothy one nine, God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, God who has saved me and then left me, no, God who has saved me and called me. That means after salvation there is a purpose. after healing there is a purpose after deliverance there is a purpose that's why i said don't isolate yourself and just think you are only a person who needs to pray or ask for prayer just for healing and deliverance you are a part of the body of christ the kingdom of god you were saved and delivered and also called amen, amen. God called Samuel. What did Samuel do? He said, "Here, Lord, here am I your servant listening to you." Amen. God has called you. What was your answer in the past? God has called you. What is your answer today? God has called you in the future for your future in him. What is your response? because someone can call us but we need not respond right we when when children are busy watching tv or playing or doing what they want we call them sometimes hey come uh, chai come here daniel come here mike come here sarah come here we call them and they will all, most of the time they will say one second dada two seconds dada and then of course it goes to 5 minutes and if we keep quiet goes to 10 minutes half an hour because they like to do what they are doing that's children's nature just like that we know god has called and we are telling god one second lord one more month lord one more year lord i will just finish this game lord i will just finish this i will pray only this much lord god has called respond quickly respond immediately like samuel and say here i am i lord your servant is speak lord your servant is listening not i will finish my life i will finish when i'm 50 when i'm 60 nothing else is there then i'll say pastor now i'm 60 can i do anything in the church no come on do something for the lord when you're 10 do something for the lord when you're 20 when you're 30 now serve jesus and serve him all through your life amen blessed be the name he has called say he has saved he has saved and he has called me Amen. He has called you. Are you listening? 
Caleb heard that call. The Israelites did not. They were busy eating, drinking, enjoying. Oh, we are going. One day they say, oh, we are going to some new land, it seems. Next day they said, oh, it's so difficult. Let's go back. They didn't see the calling. Say, I can see the calling. I can see the calling. Amen. Hallelujah. God has saved you and called you. Amen. Amen. Just stop saying, I'm just a believer. He has called you. What's your response? Amen. Say, I'm responding today in Jesus' name. I'm responding today, I'm responding today in Jesus' name. The last verse. I'm going to try and keep it as the last verse. Romans 8. Say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Most of us know only till then. We know that all things work together for good. We know that all things work together for good. All things work together for good. That's all we know. But the verse goes on to say, To those who love God, To those who are called, Called, say called, According to his purpose. To whom does, what is, who, who is the scripture written to? It's not like to anybody we can say, you know, all things will work together for good. Yes, there is a general sense in that. But it is clear. For we know that. What do we know? That all things work together for good. For whom? For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Amen. So if you are called, so don't say, I don't want to be called. That is too serious, Pastor. I don't want to be called. I'm happy like this. This promise that all things will work together if, is those for those who are called according to his purpose. Means there's a purpose in his calling. If you're called and you love him, then whatever, even whatever things seem to be going wrong, God will work it out for your good. Amen. And when you see yourself as called for a purpose like Joshua and Caleb and Moses, when you see that, your strength, you will always be strong. If you don't see your purpose, you will always be weak and disheartened and disillusioned because you don't see what is beyond, what is higher. You don't see God's calling. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a person called for a purpose. Amen. Are you listening? And if you do, you will have strength. Lift your hand up and say, Lord, Lord today I am responding to you. Lord, I understand you have called me. And you are faithful. Amen. I am responding to you, Lord. Amen. Don't live in the enjoyments of this world. Every day see. That you have a purpose. Invest your time in the kingdom of God. Invest your time in the kingdom of God. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Coming to church on Sunday is not investment of time. That is, that is investment in a small way. Some of us think coming to church is a big commitment. That's the least we can do. I, as I've always said, I've told you maybe personally, I've, I've said from here, if we can't come to church, I don't think we are even Christians. But this is the least. Invest your time for the kingdom of God. Invest your money in the kingdom of God. Invest your family in the kingdom of God. May the Holy Spirit enable you to do it today. Because he has called you for a purpose. See it. And you will be like Caleb at 85 also. You will say, hallelujah. I have lived for God. There are more things for me to do for Amen. Jesus. Amen. I will have lived for Jesus. And I will continue to live for Jesus. In the power and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I will continue in the Holy Spirit. Even at 85, you will be jumping and dancing for God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May the mighty hand of God be upon you. May every fear and curse and sickness 
break off from your life in Jesus name. May your eyes open to see that you are called with the holy calling and for a purpose in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's stand up and pray.